Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I am a voice teacher. I'm going to be reacting to and analyzing Chris Cornell singing Nearly Forgot My Broken Heart. Every time I stare into the sun Trying to find a reason to go on All I ever get is burned and blind Until the sky bleeds the pole So far he's going up to this E and then coming back down. That's right in the middle of his first bridge, but what he's doing is asking for the same tone on that note as he's getting for the rest of his notes. So even though he's starting at this place that's traditionally a little bit more difficult to sing in, your bridge or your passaggio, he's doing it in a way that is not hard because he's asking for it to sound the same as his lower notes. A lot of times people feel really comfortable with low notes but as soon as they start going up higher or approaching their bridge or going through it and past it, they start trying to change things because for some reason people think that high notes are supposed to be hard. That's not always true though. Sometimes for people, high notes are just as easy as the rest of the voice or there are other parts of the voice that are a little bit more difficult to work on. So anyway, the way that you can get through that is just by treating your whole voice as it's the same. So if you're pronouncing the word one way for a low note, try to pronounce it the same way for a high note. He's doing that same thing, and so the result is that the tone sounds the same all the way through, and the audience is left hearing a voice that sounds consistent all the way through, rather than uh, having to sound a certain way in order to get a high note. Not saying that's bad either all the time, but it's good to have, be able to have this versatility to sound the same all the way through so that you can change up your sound all the way through and do whatever that song in particular needs. <laughs> Same thing, he's, now he's going up just past the E, up to the A, uh, the A flat, but he is still not pushing into it. He's adding a little bit of distortion. He's not even opening his mouth too much more. He just, he did a little bit for that first one, but he's not like modifying everything like crazy. All that's happening is as he goes higher, he's adding a little distortion. For a lot of singers, it's easier to add distortion the higher you get, so you'll hear it just on these high notes. It also makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to think about your technique as much if you add that distortion on top. You can have a little bit of an imperfect technique and it can get covered up by a little bit of distortion. I don't think that Chris is doing that. I think that the way that he's doing it sounds really good and like he's not pushing into it and he could sing it if it was straight also or if it was clean, but he he doesn't have to do that. From the It is a process sound though. You hear there's a little bit of reverb, there's a delay, there's, there's some post-processing on this. That doesn't make it bad. Post-processing is a really good thing actually because it makes you sound better for records and for digital media, which is how almost everyone is consuming music all the time these days. So if you're, even if you're doing it live, Post-processing isn't a bad thing because it can help amplify your sound. It makes it a good thing, but it is what it is. So if you're practicing at home and you want to sound exactly like Chris does and you're like, why can't I make it sound like Chris? There's some post-processing on his voice. He's Chris Cornell. He just has a different voice than you do. So just ask yourself if you're doing it easy and if you're being true to yourself rather than trying to sound like someone on a recording. He's exposing the teeth a lot on his high notes and I've had a teacher who really firmly believes that like exposing the teeth is a really nice thing for high notes. I, I don't know how I feel about that completely but it does seem like a lot of singers kind of do that. Um, whether you have to do that I would 
argue, but it does seem to be a pretty common thing with good singers. As you go higher, just exposing those top teeth a little bit more. Every little drop of blood a little bit of I, it's just a little bit of extra strain, but I think that's mostly to get the tone that he's looking for, and it doesn't sound like he's pushing into it too much. Uh, it doesn't sound hard still, and that's the main thing to judge by, is if someone is singing, does it sound hard? It's probably hard. If it sounds like it's easy and it's recreatable, it's probably a little bit easier and more recreatable. But I won't miss not for anything. I would say that that tension that you see in his neck is probably coming from the tongue, from the root of the tongue, just flexing a little bit, not from this underlying pressure. And I think that removing that kind of tension is a good thing, but if you're able to get through your sets and you're doing it fine, you can use, I mean, it's just another tool to add style. That's the main thing that I'd work on. It's just jaw and... Gosh, those strings are cool. doesn't look like he's putting out very much effort. You can see some in his neck and his jaw just like a little bit of extra tension that you don't need, but that he's getting away with. Other than that though, it doesn't feel like he's pushing into anything or that he's not trusting the sounds that he's making. And if something is recreatable and it feels okay, it's a good sound. That's a useful sound that you can use to tell stories. If it's hurting you, and you're not able to get through your sets, start asking questions. Be like, okay, what can I fix? If he was having a hard time with this, that's the first thing I'd look at, is just making sure that he's not holding his jaw really tight and making sure that he can make these sounds without clenching his tongue quite as much. But I don't know if we need to go to that point. So at that point, it's just balancing how easy it is to what sounds you want and if this is the only way that you can figure out how to make this sound and you're still successful with it, why fix it? Because it's working. Pretty closed vowels. Another thing that might be adding a little bit of tension is just having those thinner vowels rather that are spread rather than giving a little bit more verticality to it. So it's like here versus here. It's not a huge difference and you can sing both ways, but I'm sure you can hear that when I spread my mouth like this, everything rings a little bit higher. And when I relax it like this, everything is a little bit more hooty in sound quality. So if he wanted that hootiness, that would help to just kind of relax everything. But again, all of these are things that he doesn't have to do. It's just, if you're having troubles because you're trying to sound like Chris and you're not Chris, maybe address some of these things. Make sure that you're singing well first and then add these choices on on top rather than making that the only way that you're trying to sing. From the memory of how it broke apart Here we go round again And the minute forgot my broken heart It's taken me miles away From the memory of how it broke apart Here we go round again So it's at that point that I feel a little bit conflicted because as it went on, it did start feeling a little bit tighter to me. So it would be a conversation to have because maybe he could try a few of these things out just 
relaxing the tongue a little bit and not spreading the vowels quite as much and see if it makes a difference and if he's still able to get the sound that he wants. More often than not, people are if they make those small adjustments. But if he's not, then he has to balance how much of this he can go into to preserve himself for his sets. So if I was just building up a new voice and they were completely unknown, I probably would have them do this first and just relax everything. If I was working with someone who was really well known, like Chris Cornell, I would probably do the same thing just so that he could have these options, just to make sure that he's aware of what these options are and that every choice that he's making is intentional. I bet that most of them are because it's so consistent across, but still having some new ways of doing it or even just using exercises to relax that stuff as therapy outside of it can help counteract the effects of singing with a lot of tension. Because often if you sing with a ton of tension over a career of like 10, 20, 30 years, sometimes that's when problems start happening in the voice where you might get nodules or some other kind of thing. Even if everything else is pretty good, if you have that little bit of tension, it's like playing a guitar and uh, you get really bad calluses on your fingertips because you're pressing it the same way every time. That's what a nodule is. And if you have this kind of tension, then it might be pressing a little hard every time. It's like if you're clapping really hard versus if you're just going like this when you're phonating. It's just a big balancing act to make sure that everything that he's doing is intentional and that he is at least aware of other ways to do it. And I think that he probably is. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Go check out my description. I have links to my Patreon, my Instagram, and my website, vocalease.net, where you can go if you're interested in signing up for voice lessons for me. With me. With me. Thank you.